اہل زمین سب خداوند کے حضور خوشی کا نعرہ مارو خوشی سے خداوند کی عبادت کرو گاتے ہوئے اس کے حضور حاضر ہو جان رکھو کہ خداوند ہی خدا ہے اسی نے ہم کو بنایا اور ہم اسی کے ہیں ہم اس کے لوگ اور اس کی چراگاہ کی بھیڑے ہیں شکر گزاری کرتے ہوئے اس کے پھاٹکوں میں اور حمد کرتے ہوئے اس کی بارگاہوں میں داخل ہو اس کا شکر کرو اور اس کے نام کو مبارک کہو کیونکہ خدا مند بھلا ہے اس کی شفقت ابدی ہے اور اس کی وفاداری پشت در پشت رہتی ہے گڈ مارننگ سب بخیر سلام جے مسیدی آئی ایم سارا صدیق گل فرام پاکستان آئی ایم وکر آف دا یونائٹیڈ بینیفٹس آف سینٹ اسٹیونس لٹل ہارورڈ وتھ سینٹ جیمس چرچ ان نارتھ آف بلیک برن These are presence and engagement parishes in a predominant Muslim surroundings. A warm welcome, Khush Amdid, Ji Ayanu, in this national service of praise and worship. The service this morning is partly recorded at St. James Church in COVID-safe environment and also at homes and school. Today, we celebrate the life and witness of St. Luke, the evangelist, a disciple of Jesus, a dear friend of the Apostle Paul. Paul describes him as the beloved physician and in his second letter to Timothy, as his only companion in prison. Luke is known through his writing of the gospel which stands in his name, and also the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Luke, in his writing, highlights that the good news of salvation is for all, regardless of gender, social position, or nationality. This service is planned to give you all a cross-cultural Christian experience. Jesus Christ is believed by people from different ethnicity, race, culture, and languages. We will begin with a traditional Urdu worship song used in worship services by South Asian Christians. The song speaks about the spirit of humility and surrender to the Almighty God, who is a great healer of our body, mind, and spirit. This song for the service is sung by Reverend Arun John. Oh. 
Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We say the prayer of preparation. We stand before the throne of God with countless crowds from every nation and race, tribe and language, blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor, power and might, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice, and confess our sins to God, our Redeemer. We have wandered from your paths, yet your truth leads us home. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have failed to live as your children, yet your love restores us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We are disfigured by our sin, yet your power heals us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We hold a moment of silence. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself and cleanse us from all our sins that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
almighty God, you call Luke the physician, whose praise is in the gospel, to be an evangelist and physician of the soul. By the grace of the Spirit and through the wholesome medicine of the gospel, give your church the same love and power to heal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I am a Pakistani Christian, born and brought up in a Christian family in the city of Gujramala, region of Punjab in Pakistan. My faith was nurtured from very early age by my parents, Ulfat and Siddiq. There were many ups and downs in my faith journey, but God sustained me. I started my personal faith journey with Jesus at the age of 14. Many individuals have contributed in my faith journey. Surrounded by majority Muslim community in Pakistan has helped me to value my faith in Jesus Christ. After completing graduation, I joined the United Bible Training Center in Gujramala, Pakistan, as a Bible teacher and taught for seven years. During this period, I completed my post-graduation MA in Islamic Studies. In 2006, I was invited by the Church Mission Society as a volunteer to be a resource for cross-cultural ministry in Bradford with an ecumenical church group called the Inner Ring Group of Churches in Bradford. However, before starting my volunteer work in Bradford, UK, I was sent for a cross-cultural exposure to work in a predominantly Muslim area in Indonesia, which was a group area during apartheid in Johannesburg, South Africa. I never realized that after my cross-cultural training in ministry under the guidance of the Reverend Canon Dr. Arun John in Johannesburg will find me eventually working with him as a volunteer for nearly four years. He requested the Church Mission Society to invite me to work at St. Paul's Church in Manningham, Bradford, in their ministry amongst vulnerable women and South Asian Christian community. During my time in Manningham, I felt a call for ordained ministry. St. Paul's Church Manningham prayerfully recommended me to then the Diocese of Bradford, and the Diocese graciously sponsored me. After national selection process, I started ministerial formation training at the Queen's Foundation Theological College, Birmingham, from 2008 till 2011. I was ordained deacon in 2011 and served my curacy at St. Paul's Church, Shipley, Bradford. My first post of responsibility from June 2015 till October 2019 was at Woodhouse Close Church, Bishop Auckland, as priest in charge and associate priest of the parish of Bishop Auckland, Durham Diocese. Since October 2019, 
I am serving as Vicar of the United Benefice of St. Stephen's with St. James Blackburn in the Diocese of Blackburn. As I continue to minister in cross-cultural context in the Church of England, I realize that Christians from different racial and cultural backgrounds are a great asset. We have a testimony of our faith lived in the most difficult social and political circumstances. I feel privileged to work in this country and my presence becomes enabling both for me and others to confess the love and saving power of Jesus in not is not confined to any particular culture, race, or regional boundaries. For God loved the whole world, and we are all part of God's world, engaged in building His kingdom. We are going to have our Bible readings the first reading is done by Canon Herrick Daniel and our Gospel reading is done by Reverend Joanne McCulloch. The reading is taken from Acts chapter 16, beginning to read from verse 6 to 12a. The Apostle Paul, extraordinary vision in us and a desperate cry to help in Macedonia. They went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. When they had come opposite Mycenae, they attempted to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So passing by Mysia, they went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia, pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of uh, Macedonia and a Roman colony. May God in his mercy add a blessing to his holy word. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St Luke, chapter 10 and verses 1 to 9. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the labourer deserves to be paid. Do not move from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there. 
and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near you. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. If I had one word to describe lockdown in Lancashire, it would be this, acceleration. Three examples. There's been an acceleration in relationships. People have come together to work for the common good. Acceleration in technology. We've been so amazed how uh, agile our churches have been in offering online worship. Three out of four of our churches are offering online services. And most excitingly, there's been acceleration in the gospel. I'm finding I'm, in, in everyday conversations, I'm reaching the point of talking about Jesus much faster than ever before. In our county with the highest rate of coronavirus in the country, people are facing death and asking the big questions in life. You are joining us today in the fruit of this acceleration. The Reverend Sarah Gill, uh, called to England from Pakistan, has been pioneering our monthly multilingual services. These have reached across the diocese of Blackburn uh, and cross boundaries both national and international. Here in our town of Blackburn, um, known for its history of innovation, people speak an amazing total of 70 languages. Punjabi and Urdu are the languages Sarah has chosen for our national service today. But in our first reading from Acts, we find a surprising incident when Paul is prevented from crossing boundaries. He'd already been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching in the province of Asia. Now he tries to enter Bithynia, and I quote, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. How on earth did that happen? Well, the clue is in our gospel reading. When Jesus sent off 72 people on mission, he was clear. When you enter a house, first say, peace to this house. And if a man of peace is there, your peace will rest on him. If not, it will return to you. Here's the clue. Peace always precedes an encounter with Jesus. We can tie our tongues in knots when it comes to showing our faith. The clue is to look for peace. If there's no peace, move on. Don't waste your time. Let me give you an example. All my ordained ministry has been in urban parishes across the northwest. And in our last parish, um, our vicarage was in the middle of Widnes and surrounded by a number of nightclubs. The plus side was we had a fantastic curry house just minutes from our door. And one cold, dark February night, I was on my way to get our Friday night curry. And I bumped into three teenage girls on the street. What are you doing out on a night like this? Mum's at bingo and so can't go home yet and Chloe's been thrown out of school. I felt helpless and so sorry for them. So I dug deep and with the only thing I had to offer and said, well, and it might sound funny, but I believe that prayer can change things. And um, can I pray that Chloe gets back into school? Hmm, okay. So I prayed and I asked for the peace of Jesus. And when I looked up, I was stunned. There was a change in the atmosphere. These three girls were like meerkats. Their heads were up, wondering what had happened. So they asked where I was from and I invited them to come to church on Sunday. Sunday came and I'm doing the kids' work. And to my horror, influenced these three teenage girls. And I say to my horror, because my um, children's work was not of a very high quality. And we had about six different kids on six different sized chairs um, around a table in the vestry. And we were looking at the questions that Jesus asked. And today it was going to be, what do you want me to do for you? So kids were drawing pictures in answer to that question. Huh, this is so boring. The girls pouted and flicked their hair. One grabbed a felt, tick, a felt tip in rebellion and wrote, I want Jesus to give me one pound 20. The other two copied her mutiny and wrote the same thing. Then not long after that, they left. Later that evening, they met a tramp on the street. He shoved some money into their hands. It was three pounds 60. They showed up at church the next week. Chloe got back into school. She brought her boyfriend to church. This is so boring, he said. And Chloe was right back at him. Well, she prays and things happen. How can the gospel cross boundaries? How could a middle-aged woman possibly communicate with three teenage girls on the streets of witness? The clue is the peace of Jesus. 
In our nation today, people are crying out for peace. In our nation today, the diagnosis of Jesus hasn't changed. The harvest is plentiful and the workers are few. In our nation today, the clue of Jesus hasn't changed. Speak his peace from heaven itself. Heal the sick, Jesus said. The kingdom of God is near you. So this week, why not invite the peace of Jesus into the situations you find yourself in at work or at home, at school, or especially if you're at university? Try it. Invite the peace of Jesus and you'll be amazed how the atmosphere really does shift and doors open for conversations about faith. And if they don't, take a leaf from Paul's missionary journeys and move on. Or if you're new to the idea of church or Christian faith, and all this talk of the peace of Jesus sounds like gobbledygook or Jolly Robins, as my mum used to say, well, here's a challenge. Find a quiet moment, and then why not ask the Spirit of Jesus to bring his peace to you today? You're inviting him to bring the atmosphere of heaven where all is well, where there is no more death or mourning or crying or pain, where people are not judged by the language they speak or the colour of their skin, where all the incredible colours that he has made in creation come fully, fully to life, where the peace of Jesus crosses all boundaries, all cultures, all languages, where heaven is near, it can break in today. So to finish with the words of Jesus, heal the sick and tell them the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven has come near you. Let's pray. Come down, O most powerful Holy Spirit, and subdue us. From heaven, where the ordinary is made glorious, and glory is but ordinary, would you bring your peace from heaven itself to guard our hearts? And would you bathe us with the brilliance of your light, like you. Amen. We continue to ponder on the word of God shared by Bishop Jill as we listen reflectively and prayerfully the coming hymn.
let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Children from St. Stephen's Church of England Primary School, Little Harvard, are going to lead us in our prayers of intercessions. Jesus, our way, our truth, our life, be with us and all who follow you in the way you so graciously taught us. Deepen our appreciation of your truth and fill us with your life. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, good shepherd, we give you away for the sheep. We cover the struggle, we bind up the injured, we strengthen the sick, and we lead the healthy and strong to new pastures. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. We pray to Jesus who is present with us to eternity. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, light of the world, bring the light and peace of your gospel to the nations. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, breed of life, give food to the hungry, and nourish us all with your word. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, the resurrection and the life, we give you thanks for all who have lived and believed in you. We give thanks for the life and Matthew and all those who have gone before us. Raise us with them to eternal life. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Accept our prayers and be with us always. Amen. We conclude our prayers by saying the Lord's Prayer together. You are welcome to join in whichever version or language you are familiar with. I'm going to say the Lord's Prayer in Urdu. Ay, humare baap, tu jo asman par hai, tera naam paak mana jaye. Teri baad shahi aaye, teri mercy jaisi asman par puri hoti hai, zameen par bhi ho. हमारी रोज की रोटी आज हमें दे जिस तरह हमने अपने कर्जदारों को मुआफ किया है तू भी हमारे कर्ज हमें मुआफ कर हमें आजमाइश में न ला बल्कि बुराई से बचा क्योंकि बादशाही और कुदरत और जलाल हमेशा तेरे ही हैं आमैन Today, once again, we are reminded that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. If God is calling you, take heart and step forward in faith to participate in building God's just kingdom on this earth.
A Christian act of worship that uses different languages conveys a clear message that Jesus Christ is the Saviour of the world. And using words recorded by Luke the Evangelist, Christians are sent as his witnesses to the ends of the earth. So let us pray for his blessing. God give you grace to follow his saints in faith and hope and love, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love, and to reflect God's glory. Thank you to Sarah and to Jill for leading us, and to you for joining us in this service of the Word, celebrating Luke the Evangelist. Be assured that God is good all the time, all the time. God is good.